Hello everyone and welcome to the Excel Hub. Today I will be showing you how to create a monthly budget in Excel like the one shown here. A budget is simply a way of mapping out your income and expenses over a period of time. Now budgeting is important for several reasons. It encourages you to plan ahead, which gives you a better idea of how to manage your finances in order to achieve your financial goals. It can also help avoid overspending, especially if you stick to the budget that you make. So let's open a new worksheet and make a simple yet effective budget like this one. To start, let's add the header and the months. So our header will be monthly budget. And we can input January and February. Now, when we toggle these cells across, Excel is going to provide us with the remaining months. We can center align these cells by clicking Alt H A C and we can change the style of these cells by clicking Alt H J and let's go for this style over here. Now these cells do not fit inside the column width so what we can do is we can click Alt O C A and for these ones here we can click Alt O C W and select 12 to ensure that the column width is consistent. Next we can add our income. We will assume that our income only consists of our salary which is going to be £3,000 a month we can bring this across by clicking Control R. However, since our salary is pre-tax, we're going to deduct the tax and the national insurance. And I've calculated these in advance. So the tax is 391.67 and the national insurance is 265. If you're curious about how I calculated them, then check out the videos I've provided in the description below, which show you how you can do just that. We can then calculate our after-tax salary, which is simply going to be our pre-tax salary minus our tax minus our national insurance. Finally, our total income is going to be exactly the same as our after-tax salary. However, here we're going to use the sum function in case we later want to add any additional sources of income. Next, let's format the income section. We can make the income and total income rows bold by clicking Control B. We can also add a bottom border here by clicking Alt HBO to denote the calculation. And finally, we can add indents over here by clicking Alt H6 and adjust the column width by clicking Alt OCA. Now that our income section is complete, we can move on to our expenses. And we're going to assume that we have five main expenses, which are rent and utilities, food, a gym expense, expenses for holidays, and other expenses. For our rent and utilities, we're not going to want to spend any more than 30% of our disposable income on this. So we can input equal 0.3 times C10, which is our total income. We can then bring this across. It's usually quite tough to plan for food expenses, as they're usually between a range of values. Here we can use the rand between function, which provides us with a random value within a given range. So let's click equals rand between, and let's assume that our food expense is between 300 and 400 pounds per month. We can drag this across. And as you can see, we're provided with random values between 300 and 400. However, you'll notice that when we change the value of this cell here, for example, all of these cells change. Now to prevent them from doing this, we can copy them, we can then right click, click paste special and paste just the values which will prevent them from updating. Our gym expense will be £25 a month and let's say we have holidays worth £2,000 twice a year. Finally, we'll assume that 10% of our disposable income goes towards other expenses which we can calculate as follows. We can then total our expenses using the sum function. Now that our expenses section is functional, we can format it by making these two rows bold. We can add bottom borders over here to denote the calculation. And finally, we can indent these cells here by clicking Alt H6. Now that we have our income and our expenses, we can add the summary calculations. So firstly, we have our net income, and this is simply the difference between the total income and the total expenses. 
Then we have our opening balance, which is the amount of money we're bringing forward from the previous month. So let's assume this to be thousand pounds in January. And finally, we have our closing balance. And our closing balance can be thought of as the money we take home at the end of the month. So it's the net income plus the opening balance. Now, for February onwards, our opening balance will be the same as the closing balance of the previous month. So we can add this. Now, you'll notice that when I drag this across, we're provided with a bunch of zeros. And this is because we haven't brought the closing balance across. So let's do that now. Perfect. Finally, we can make all of these cells bold and add borders to denote the calculations. Next, we can add a graph which shows how our net income and closing balance changes over time. We're going to want to simultaneously select the months, select the net income and select the closing balance. And you can do this by pressing down the control key, then enter the insert tab click on insert combo charts and let's use the first one here. Let's change the design of the charts by entering the design tab and selecting this option here. Let's also click on this plus button and untick the chart title element to remove the chart title. And finally, let's resize the chart to make it fully visible. Let's also insert a bar chart which shows how our expenses are broken down. So once again, we select all of the months and we also select all of the expenses. We then enter the insert tab, click on the bar chart icon and select this second one over here. We can once again improve the design. So let's enter the design tab. Let's select this third option here and let's remove the chart title. Finally, let's also resize this bringing it along over here. There we go. Our budget is nearly complete. We can remove the grid lines by clicking Alt WVG. We can format these cells into pound signs by clicking Control Shift 4. And we can remove the borders of these charts by right clicking on them, selecting Format Chart Area and clicking No Line over here. And let's do the same for this one. Finally, a last step we may want to take is to bring this legend to the top so that it matches this one as well. So we can right click on it, select format legend and select top. This brings us to the end of this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.